I am assistant head teacher in Sheffield. I don't look like an assistant head teacher today because this is my day looking around the show. Um, what kind of school uh, is Notre Dame? Well, very, very successful. If you go back to the 1990s, we were a bog standard comp. Today, Ofsted rate is outstanding in every single category and subcategory the last three times they've been to see us. I think that means they'll stop coming now. Um, big Catholic comprehensive, we take kids from all across the city of Sheffield, uh, from profound special needs through to uh, Oxbridge applicants. And uh, Technology College is the reason why we've always been keen on new technology and lots of other sort of specialism things that we chase to try and get a few more quid and, uh, and do our bit. And last year we were at Mac collecting a Bechter Award for That's ICGS. right, yeah, we won the uh, best whole school in, in Yorkshire and Humberside, good old Bechter's bless them. Uh, I thought I, that makes me reigning champion now they've been shut, so uh, forever. <laughs> but they, they squeeze one more set of awards in. Um, what I want to talk about really is, is whole school improvement and a whole school approach with my senior management hat on. This is basically a quick rundown on what our virtual school is. I don't, I don't talk about learning platforms, because that's just one aspect of how the students are working. So virtual school is the web-based manifestation of the brick-built school. Uh, and I would argue it's more important. It's open 24-7, 365, as, of, as opposed to a few hours on 200 days a year. So all our websites, which are our shop fronts, our portal, are written with an open source tool called Joomla. Have a look at them in a minute. You decide if they look professional and if they look slick. Um, I'm going to show you our school magazine, which is an open source flipping book, it is called that. Um, but there's plenty of traditional stuff in here, proprietary stuff which you'll, you'll recognise. So we, we all use Outlook, uh, uh, have an exchange server. Um, we got rid of our very expensive telephone system and put in our own open source um, IP telephony system. For a, a 1,400 kid school with 200 staff, our call charges are £20 a month. That's, that's uh, reasonable. It's not bad reason to I'm have one. I'm paying more from the <laughs> Yes, that's true. I, I am, actually. Oh, yeah. um, management information system, they're down there. They'll charge you a few quid, uh, but it's very good. So, so the bits all fit together. The fact that you've that's gone the point. from proprietary for your management information system and for your email system, why you've gone proprietary for your email system, never mind. <laughs> that doesn't... It doesn't matter. No from, 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 a, from a user's point of view, they just see notredam-high.co.uk is where I go and do my stuff. If I'm a learner, if I'm a teacher, if I'm a parent, we do loads of parental engagement for new technology. They log on to one seamless, and dare I say it, they log on to Windows Architecture, Active Directory, username and password, all that business, and it just works. The VLE from Moodle, the ePortfolio is Mahara, those are open source. And we publish all of our folders on the network, like my documents and uh, all that type of stuff. That just gets pumped out through the school website uh, with, a, with a free tool from GleamTech. Um, so there's, there's our front page to our school website as it looked when we were trying to flog some tickets to the Wizard of Oz a few weeks ago. <laughs> this is the crucial bit here, staff login here, students here and parents here. And then they're logging in with a username and password to a, a, a personalised area. Um, so... The, the, hard, the software that's running this is Joomla, yeah. which run on, runs on Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, Can Fusion, do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stack. Yeah. The actual design and the content of this, who's put all of that together? Well, it's largely looked after by a, a specific poster school called Virtual School okay. Coordinator. And that's because we got to a tipping point where you used to go to one of the technicians and say, can you do me a web page, can you change the web page? And now we're actually so committed to this way of working that it justifies uh, a full-time post who's come from a technical background, but he works hand-in-hand -hand with teaching staff. And often, for example, the PE section, they've got so many results to update, he's shown them how to do it, they do it themselves. One of the arguments we hear which I would not subscribe to, obviously, is that open source requires more support or more expertise in order to support it. Is it the case that you've had to employ this guy because you've no. this open source? Really? I mean, there's, uh, I know plenty of schools who have bought VLEs from people down there and have employed a similar kind of post okay. to actually run the VLE. So because it's just a big job. Have, no matter, if you want to do something with this much yeah. online content... It's, when it becomes, it, it's magnitude in task. And it's like saying, you know, this job has got so big... It's, all right, teachers are using this, and, and especially when we get to Moodle, teachers do it for themselves. But the job of running virtual school has become so big, we can no longer just say to teachers, can you do a bit in the evening? Their job is teaching kids, quite often with this technology. But who's running it behind the scenes and training and supporting and hand-holding? We've got a dedicated member of staff. I'll talk later was on it, how we pay for, pay for that. Was it hard <laughs> finding somebody to... No, do that job no. because even though you're using open source, no, we're we're, we're 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 employing IT graduates at our school, and they're coming straight out of university in Sheffield looking for IT jobs, and they don't, they don't see working for a school any different to working for any other employer. And they and don't they see like open it. source is different from absolutely not. It's, it's a web-based content management system, and they've learned about it at university. It, it, yes. It's a natural instinct for them. 
Um, and they're, they're problem solvers. They don't say, give me a budget and I'll buy something to do this. They say, leave it with me. And you come back a day later and say, I've set this up. <coughs> and they, they like that creative uh, uh, buzz to their, to their job. Right. Uh, these websites are very interactive. We have a really nice navigation. We put things like, for the parents' pages, interactive, frequently asked questions. They can post the questions, see their answers coming <coughs> up, see that 300 parents also are interested in that answer, so it's really helpful for them to do that. <laughs> Um, same really with good. the kids. We run Can we go back to that slide? I'm oh. curious to watch which ones they were interested in. Oh, well. Um, and my child bring a mobile phone. Oh, I don't know if you read any of the. Of course, you don't read any of the trash newspapers in the UK, but I get dragged through the Daily Mail for letting the kids use their mobile phones and lessons. Oh, what a stupid idea that would be. Um, yeah, but it also it tells us things like really this, nice. this is the top hit of, the, of, of last summer. For year six students, parents, yes. and the kids who are coming up to school, and what's yeah. the question they hit most often? How do I get hold of the school uniform? Well, that told me we didn't tell them properly how to get hold of the school uniform, but one parent asked, the rest read the answer. And there's only 200 kids coming, so why did 313 read it? So you have this big society, community engagement Absolutely. idea. Because these you, could be, you could be writing letters yeah. to parents and websites and leaflets yeah. thinking, this is what they need to know. Let them ask you through interactive Web 2 technology, because yeah. there's some things that are obvious to them and some things you didn't realise they wanted to know. Sorry, you were about to move on. Same with the kids. You know, we do lots of voting and polling. We want to elect the new house captain. We want to do a survey of whether they got the bus or that will bike or walk or lift to school or, or how often do you need to use a computer for homework. You know, these are big paper chasers. Local authority needs to know by next week. Bung it through Moodle. The kids see it up there. Uh, or this is a Joomla uh, poll, actually. Uh, they'll see it when they log on. They'll click answer it. Job's done. Things like this, really, really easy. But because the website is so easy to edit, and they can, uh, any, you know, people who know how to do it have got a username and password can do it from home. Things like putting up the seating plan for an exam the night before. If that saves a massive crush at the notice board in the morning and a very stressful start to what's probably the most important day of a kid's life, that's good use of technology. But you need a flexible, simple system. Okay, so Moodle is our VLE, apparently the most commonly used VLE in the world. If they had a stall down there to sell it from, I'd be going back to my head tonight saying, we've got to buy it. If they said 10,000 quid, I'd say, we've got to buy it. I've been through a lot of the fellows down there. We've had them. We've suffered under their VLEs. Uh, I didn't pay for this one. It's by far the best one. And in terms of my responsibility in management, I've tried to get those granite boulders of VLEs moving in school before, and they don't really catch on beyond the fanatics. This one is a snowball. It's running on its own. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of the teachers are now the trainers. They're the experts who are showing other people how to so use it. So how that. come Moodle is so much better than the stuff which we could go out and buy out? It's hard to say. It's that okay. magic X factor. It's, it's flexible. It, if you think of, oh, I wish it would do such and such, it does. If you think, I thought something really wacky. I'm going to set a live chat room for homework that's safe and secure and logged against username and password and no weirdos can get in and, and I can check the morning after what they all said. Yeah, you can do that. And there's so discussion have, forums and things like that. You have got this modular architecture and that, yes, you've got Moodle, and then yeah. you've got all of the other Lego blocks again that you can add into And one, and one of the biggest, the the biggest crunches is your VLE will never take off in school if it doesn't talk to your management system. No teacher is going to sit down and say, I'm going to give... Oh, how many kids do we teach in our timetable? A busy teacher might teach 200 children in a week. They're not going to put all those users into their VLE account one by one. I need 30 kids assigned to this. We've just got a button that goes straight into our proprietary paid-for Circo management system. Click, pull that class. I want them to see this lesson. And I'll give you some examples. You know... Um, it's not, this is meant to be simple navigation because we found with menu structures, um, you know, you say to children, what do you mean you couldn't find the homework? You click here, you open that folder, you go into year seven, you go into geography, you go, to, isn't that obvious? And the kids go, no, you just click through 20 folders. Homework, it knows who you are. Click there, your homework is waiting. This lesson, uh, I teach a bit of geography, teach a bit of chemistry. This is a virtual field trip to uh, the Lower Don Valley. It's the only way I go to Meadow Hall. Um, and uh, if you want to see this lesson, uh, it's a teacher's TV film uh, of me teaching it. If you search for hard to teach geography, you'll get this where we are using Moodle and we're mashing it up with Google Maps and inserting uh, videos and photographs and, and graphs and things into, uh, into Google Maps that are then embedded within Moodle. I have to go looking and go off hunting for them. And the children then, this is a really important thing about good VLEs, they're not just a place where you can find worksheets and PowerPoints and, uh, and resources, you're actually doing the work into the VLE. So the child's input their answer, and then here's my bug, uh, and I can actually input my feedback there, drop in a grade that goes into my mark book. It's just seamless, it's brilliant.
Um, so I mentioned earlier, I'll say how, I, how we paid for the uh, virtual school coordinator post. Well, here's, here's one example. He set this up. We used to print 2,000 copies a term of our glossy school magazine. It looked really nice. Uh, but kids can seem to feel the same way when you see how many were in the gutter outside school at the end of the term. Or, or the teachers, dare I say, oh, I was really busy, I forgot to hand out the Christmas magazine. It's not quite so snappy in January with that Christmas colour, is it? So we, we put it onto uh, uh, an electronic um, ma magazine because I believed it was a good idea. It's about in, uh, letting people access it from all over the world. But it saved us £12,000 a year at the printers. And it increased circulation from 2,000 copies. This one was downloaded over 3,000 times within a week of going on our website. And it's so easy to spread it virally through the social networks. So that's £12,000 just from moving one year's worth of magazines yeah. online. You've done some analysis of the other costs you Well, I mean, you, you can look at choosing Moodle. Uh, I, you know, I do passionately believe it's a brilliant VLE in its own right, and if you go around and ask how much would it cost a school as big as ours to have one of those VLEs down in the hall, that's probably the other half of my virtual school coordinator's um, salary. But uh, I'll finish at the end some, some, some interesting figures that were just published yesterday by, by uh, good old Michael Gove. Um, so, uh, is that my last one? It is. Yeah, yeah, quite. Um, if I just, it looks very much like these are back of envelope calculations. Trust me, they're, they're off the DFB website. But I literally scribbled these down last night. Because not only did the league tables come out last night, and an important thing, try not to show off too much, they, they show in terms of exam results, we're a very, very effective school. Uh, in our local authority, we won a race yesterday that A, we didn't know we'd entered, no one was racing against us for, and none of us wanted to be in, but we've got the highest EBAC score um, in the city. Ridiculous. So, yeah, yeah. because our kids <laughs> yes. like choosing geography and history, never mind. But the really exciting thing was they released the financial league tables of how efficient schools are at spending their money yesterday, uh, which was news to me. And I found out that we spent last year £44 per pupil on our IT resources. Okay, doesn't mean anything to be compare it. The national median for secondary schools is £63. So we're an outstanding school with award-winning ICT, and it's not that a little bit cheaper, it's a lot cheaper. And then I start thinking it's about... spent a third less per pupil. And you think all those things average. we're paying for that are quite expensive, and we could get rid of Corel Draw in the D&T department next year and put Inkscape in, you know, we, we could get rid of Photoshop. We've got a lot of this stuff, because we do like to let subject leaders decide what's right for them. They're the expert, but I like to evangelise and, and show them things, but they're the experts, they decide how they spend their departmental budget, but their departmental budgets are shrinking. And they'll come back to me and say, is there a cheaper way? And I'll say, not only is there a cheaper way, there's a better way, because these tools are fantastic. Paul, that's brilliant. Now remind me again, where can we find out more about what you've done? Well, they're, they're just... They're just Rather good book that's just coming out. Uh, but seriously, it's not, it's not out until February. Uh, the school website, notchdown-high.co.uk. If you're not using Twitter, get on there, follow me, at Paul Haig. You should put it on there. You don't have to write it yourself. It should be there. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Alison. Haigie's gets me in a lot of trouble in the, in the, in the ranks. So. That's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>